Hello, and welcome to Crad COVID Readings. I'm Keith R.A. DeCandido, and that's my cat Kaylee on the side there, and reading my writings in order to make the pandemic palatable. Hi, Kaylee. You want to help? Okay. Anyway, uh, a decade ago, uh, Michael Jan Friedman had a crazy idea, uh, and it was so crazy that he incorporated it into the name. He and a bunch of his buddies got together to form Crazy 8 Press. Uh, it initially included uh, Mike as well as Robert Greenberger, Peter David, uh, Aaron Rosenberg, uh, and Glenn Howman. And then later, uh, a bunch of other people uh, added themselves to it, including um, Russ Colchomiro, Paul Kupperberg, Mary Fan, uh, all of whom continue to put out uh, stuff through this little author's collective. Um, they've all uh, done various bits. Uh, Aaron has done his Duck Bob series. Uh, Russ has continued some of the series. Mary, uh, all of them have done lots of nifty stuff. They also do an anthology every year. And uh, three of them have been the Pangea Shared World anthologies that Mike uh, conceived, in which I wrote a story for volume three of. Uh, the, Glenn did Altered States of the Union four years ago, uh, which I did a story I read earlier in this uh, one called We Seceded Where Others Failed. Um, and uh, Badass Mom, uh, there were two that came out this year, not just Pangea 3, but also Badass Moms, which Mary edited, uh, which came, which uh, I did a story called Matra Familias in. Anyway, a uh, couple years ago, as a joke, really, during Crazy 8's usual panel at Shore Leave, because uh, most, pretty much all of the people involved in Crazy 8 uh, go to Shore Leave every year, and um, they always have a panel there. Uh, the, the Crazy 8 press was actually first launched at Shore Leave, and, um, uh, uh, publicly launched, anyway. And uh, and they always announced what the anthology was going to be, and they hadn't actually decided on an anthology, and as a joke, Peter David said, I know, we'll do They Keep Killing Glenn. Yeah, it was a joke. Um, and yet, it actually happened. <laughs> Basically, the theme of the anthology is that we all get to come up with different ways of killing Glenn Howman. Glenn is uh, uh, a old, very old friend of, of all of ours. Um, He's, he's written a few stories here and there. He uh, did a couple of Star, Starfleet Corps of Engineers uh, novellas. Uh, he, was, he wrote some Marvel Comics-based short stories back in the 90s um, and, and many other things. Uh, one of his first jobs was to edit a comic book for DC called 101 Use, Other Uses for a Condom. Um, he was one of the founders, one of the, the earliest people to get involved in e-books with Bibliobytes books uh, in the 90s. Unfortunately, the technology wasn't really there for that yet. Um, and currently he uh, runs ComicMix.com, which is a comics uh, news site and publisher. Anyway, uh, Glenn also does most of the production, a lot of the production work and website work for Crazy 8 Press. And it was decided as a joke to basically kill him over and over again. Uh, I jumped at the chance to do this, uh, as, as did uh, a whole bunch of other authors. We've got uh, David Gerald, David Mack, Joe Corallo, Robert Greenberger, Russ Colchimiro, Dean Scott, Mary Fan, Kathleen O'Shea David, who co-edited the book with Peter David, uh, Setsu Uzume, uh, Lorraine J. Anderson, Hildy Silverman, Aaron Rosenberg, Blair Learn, Brett Hudgens, S. Brady Calhoun, Michael Jen Friedman, a Amy Lewanski, Jennifer Purcell Rosenberg, Paul Kupperberg, and co-editor Peter David. We all got to kill Glenn. It was awesome. Uh, Glenn's uh, uh, recompense for this was to write the introductions, which I'm not going to read because it's my reading series, so there. Uh, if you want to know what it said, you have to buy the book, which you can get from Crazy 8 Press. My story is called House Hunting, and it's actually based on a true story-ish. I'll explain why at the end. Anyway, House Hunting by Keith R.A. DeCandido from They Keep Killing Glenn. I don't like this place. Brandy put her head in her hands. They'd only just walked into the house. The real estate agent pursed her lips. If you just take a look at the open floor plan, Mr. Hellman, you'll see that... Glenn let out a sigh. I just had to duck to get in the front door. I'm sure all your clients who aren't 6'7 think the open floor plan is just ducky. But my wife and I are looking for a place to spend the rest of our lives. I don't want to spend it bending over every single time I walk in the front door. Pass. Giving the agent an apologetic look, Brandy said, I'm sorry, but... The agent held up a hand. No, no, it's fine. I really do understand. I got four other places for you to see today anyhow. Glenn muttered. Hope they're not all built by architects from Hobbiton. Ow! That last was from when Brandy smacked him on the arm. I don't like this place. At least this time Glenn waited until they had looked at the entire house. Glenn fit in the doorway, he had no complaints about anything else, and Brandy adored the newly remodeled kitchen, which had everything she wanted. 
Glenn himself had barely acknowledged the kitchen, as his involvement in that particular room would be limited to grabbing cans of Pepsi out of the fridge and loading the dishwasher. Both those appliances were present and accounted for. But then they looked at the bathroom. Immediately, Glenn stepped into the shower. He barely fit in the tub, and the shower head was at the same height as his neck. I'm not stooping down every time I wash my hair. Look, I know it's annoying, Brandy started, but then Glenn stared right at her. Fine. How would you like it if you had to climb up a step or two to sit on the toilet? Brandy just stared at him for a moment and then turned back to the agent. I guess we won't be making an offer on this one either. So I see, the agent said brusquely. Let's move on to the next one. I don't like this place. Even Brandy had to admit that this two-story house was problematic. The ground floor was magnificent, a beautiful kitchen, huge dining room, a spacious living room with plenty of space for that giant flat screen that they'd been drooling over. Upstairs was another matter. Where downstairs had ten-foot ceilings, the upstairs, which consisted of two bedrooms and two bathrooms, had seven-foot ceilings. For the five-foot-two Brandy, it wasn't an issue, but Glenn's head was almost scraping the ceiling, and it did scrape the light fixtures. The agent sighed. Maybe you could convert this space down here to a bedroom? And the reason we need a two-bedroom is because the second bedroom will be my home office. I can't work if I feel like I'm Gulliver trapped in Lilliput. I'm really sorry, Brandy said, but he's got a point. Fine. I'll try to find something more Brobdignagian for you. I don't like this place. Oh, come on! Brandy and the agent said that simultaneously. You fit in the doorway, the agent said, and the shower, she pointed upward. Ten-foot ceilings, for pity's sake. What's the damn problem? No, 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 that's all perfectly okay. I just don't like the place. Don't like the ugly kitchen, don't like the closed floor plan, don't like how tiny the backyard is, and I don't like Victorians as a rule. Brandy shrugged. We need to both like it. Do you have any other places? Tightly, the agent said. I do have one other place. Wasn't planning to show it to you at first, but thinking about it, she pulled out her cell phone. Let me just make a quick call. The agent stepped away as she pulled her smartphone out of her purse. Brandy looked up at Glenn. Maybe this next one? Maybe this next agent. She's getting a little snotty. I guess, but we're being picky. We want to spend the rest of our lives here. We have to both love it. Why doesn't she get that? Glenn shook his head and then frowned. Is that Latin she's speaking over the phone? Ooh, I like this place. Brandy had to admit that she was iffy about this last house at first. It was on a hilly back street in a cul-de-sac with no other houses around. The yard was a bit overgrown, but that just meant the two of them had to do some landscaping work on it. It was very old, but it seemed to be in good working order. The kitchen was to die for. It had plenty of room, an island, a breakfast nook, a huge gas stove, and tons of counter space. The ceilings were all eight feet, which was plenty, and the rooms were all spacious. There were two bathrooms, one with a tub, one with a shower stall, but both were spacious enough to fit Glenn's outsized frame. There was even a two-car garage, which meant that they could park their car in it and have room for storage. It was also at the very bottom of their price range, which was a bit suspicious. The previous owners sold it rather unexpectedly after only living here for six months. It had been on the market for years prior to that. Like I said, I wasn't going to show it to you because nobody ever wants it. I'm surprised you like it so much. Why is it so cheap? Glenn asked. Well, the wiring is a bit substandard, and a lot of the fixtures and such are pretty old. The previous owners were saying they wanted to upgrade it all, but they never did before they sold. I like it, Glenn said definitively. It's got character, and I can fit in it. Well, it's kind of a mess, Brandy said with a chuckle, but it's a mess we can clean up. Maybe if they come down another 10000 They made an offer on the house and immediately started making plans for sprucing it up. They never met the previous owners. According to their attorney at the closing, uh, they just want to move on to the next phase of their lives. Still, they got the place for 10000 less than the asking price, which was already well below market value for a two-bedroom house in the suburbs. The problem started when Glenn called an electrician to make an appointment to look at the place and get an estimate for rewiring. As it was, he'd blown a circuit breaker twice just by having both his computer and the flat-screen TV on at the same time. He only ran the dishwasher when they were asleep. When he used the hairdryer, he inevitably bl blew a breaker unless he made sure Brandy turned everything else off. Oddly, when Brandy used the hairdryer, nothing blew, even though it was the same appliance. 
Unfortunately, when Glenn called the electrician, everything was fine until he provided the address. Uh, sorry, Mr. Hammond, I can't help you. Why not? That house isn't in our range. Sorry! With that, the electrician hung up. Every other electrician he could find had the same answer. A few actually came to the house, but wouldn't go inside. One day, he went to take a shower, and the shower head seemed off. He had to bend to get his hair rinsed. What the hell? After the shower, he called out to his wife. Brandy! What is it? Look! He pointed at the shower head. Yes, Glenn, that's a shower head. It's where the water comes from. Very funny. It's lower. Looks like it's in the same place to me. After drying off, he went into the bedroom, only to find himself involuntarily ducking as he went into it. Whirling around, he stared at the doorframe, which seemed shorter. Brandy, the house is shrinking. Oh, stop it, she said from the kitchen. And don't turn your computer on yet. I need to use the queasing art. Glenn grumbled to himself as he went to the bureau and pulled out a t-shirt and a pair of jeans from the middle drawer, then straightened to get at the top drawer that contained his underwear and socks. As he stood to his full height, he bumped his head on the light fixture in the center of the ceiling. Continuing to grumble, he got dressed, waited for Brandy to finish with the queasing art, and then fired up his computer. A webmaster for some websites, he did various bits of maintenance, oversight, and paperwork on several of them until Brandy announced that dinner was ready. He had to duck again to enter the dining room. I don't believe this. Either I'm growing or the house is shrinking. Brandy shrugged. I'm not noticing any difference in your height or the house. Snorting, Glenn said, right, like you can tell from all the way down there. He grinned to make it clear he was teasing. She stuck her tongue out at him. Eat your casserole. After dinner, Brandy sat in the living room and watched some TV while working on her laptop for about an hour, then went to bed as she had an early morning meeting. Glenn had spent that time on the phone with a client. When the phone call ended, he put the TV on and fired up his laptop just as Brandy had done. Two seconds later, the light went out, lights went out, and the TV, Blu-ray player, and cable box all went off. The laptop only stayed running because of its battery. Great. Just great. With a heavy sigh, Glenn got to his feet and headed toward the staircase that led to the basement where the breakers all were. He ducked his head as he entered the staircase on instinct, only then realizing that the doorframe had also seemingly shrunk. After going down the creaky old wooden steps, he realized that the seven-foot ceilings in the basement had somehow become six-foot ceilings, and he had to bend over to get to the breakers. Once he yanked the black switch from the bedrooms back to the on position, he hunched his way back up to the staircase. Upon reaching the ground floor landing, he promptly smacked his head on the doorframe, even though he was already bent over. Damn it! Rubbing his forehead, he went out into the hallway and then straightened, only to smash his head right into the glass light fixture, shattering it. Blinking away wetness, he pulled off his glasses and palmed at his forehead and eyes. The hand was covered in blood. Great. Treading gently, as there were now bits of glass all over the floor and Glenn wasn't wearing shoes, he worked his way to the bathroom. Again, he ducked, but once more, it wasn't enough of a hunch and he smacked his bleeding head on the doorframe. Spots swam before his eyes, and he was unable to stay steady on his feet. Bracing himself on the edge of the tub, he managed to lower himself to sit on that edge and try to catch his breath. More blood seeped into his eyes, and he wiped it away before turning the water on in the shower. The water sprayed down from the shower head, and he got unsteadily to his feet so he could wash away the blood and irrigate the cuts he got from the suddenly closer to the floor hall light. He rose up, and then slammed right into the shower head, which was about a foot, at least a foot lower than it had been earlier that evening. A lifelong viewer of cartoons, Glenn had always believed the phenomena of seeing stars before your eyes when suffering cranial trauma to be a bit of dramatic license on the part of those animators. As he collapsed to the porcelain floor of the tub, the last thing he thought before everything went black was that those cartoons were right. Stars danced before his eyes as he collapsed, his head crashing onto the drain as the water continued to cascade down onto his tall form. Right before lapsing into a coma, he muttered, It just figures. His head blocked the drain, so the water continued to rise. Later, after the coroner took the body away, police tried to figure out what happened. The official cause of death was drowning, but the question was how he became unconscious in the tub in the first place. The wounds on his head were consistent with the shattered light, but multiple measurements of the crime scene showed that the ceilings were eight feet high. Even someone as tall as Glenn shouldn't have been able to smash his head against it, nor bump his head on the doorframe, which was covered with his blood. For that matter, the shower head itself was seven feet off the ground, yet the victim had somehow managed to hit his head on that, too. The entire time the police checked out the house, none of them saw the real estate agent hiding in one of the many overgrown bushes that Glenn and Brandy hadn't yet gotten around to trimming back. As soon as they were gone, 
she uttered several words in Latin. Moments later, the house was gone. So, way back, God, at least like 25 years ago or so, uh, Glenn and his wife Brandy uh, were looking for a house, and one of the and the, one of the reasons why they bought the house that they still own uh, all these years later um, is because Glenn fit in the shower. <laughs> Glenn really is six seven and uh, or six five, however tall he is. Um, no, it doesn't matter when you're that tall. He's just ridiculously tall, and <laughs> um, so he. Uh, uh, so, so that was one of the main reasons why they bought that house. It's a wonderful house. I mean, it's, 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 uh, and they've done great things with it in the years since. But I thought that was an amusing starting point for uh, the short story. Um, Glenn, Glenn has been one of my dearest friends for low these almost three decades now. We met in 1991 uh, when, uh, through Peter David, actually. Um, and, uh, and he's become a, a very dear friend. And he, he was very, very, very cool about this. Uh, getting killed over and 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 over again. So if you see Glenn, you know, tell him he really kind of looks like himself and that you always admired him and, you know, all those other things you say to dead people. Thank you very much for watching. You can find me online at dekendido.net, read my blog at dekendido.wordpress.com, support me at patreon.com slash cred, and please, please vote and please, please stay safe. Take care.